Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make this material procedurally in Blender. Feeling lazy? You can support this channel and skip the hard work by grabbing the blend file for this material from Gumroad for just a pound. Feeling flush? Feel free to throw some of that coin my way using the coffee link in the description below the video. Okay, so let's make a start. I'm in the shading tab. I have an object loaded with a principled shader applied and I've got viewport shading enabled. One key thing that will help with this particular uh, shader is that you have your object shaded flat. If you shade it smooth, it might not work so well. Anyway, we don't actually need the principal shader, so we're going to get rid of that. We're going to add four glass shaders. So one, and then just duplicate it three times. Two, three, and then the fourth one, I'm just going to pop up here. We're going to change these all to GGX, and that's the distribution method. This top one, you're going to increase the saturation to 1 to give you red. In fact, let's go to the RGB value for this. Red all the way to 1. For the second one, green all the way to 1. And for the third one, blue all the way to 1. So you've got red, green, blue. Uh, the roughness, we are going to change to 0 0.001 on each of those. Now we've got an index of refraction in each of those, but um, rather than having to change them all individually, what I'm going to do is press Shift A and grab a value node. I'm also going to press N and rename it so that I know what value it links to. And we'll set that to two, which is the index of refraction for crystal. And that value can then get plugged into every single slot that needs it. So we only ever need to change it in this. Now there's not much happening up here because I still haven't plugged it into the material output. So let's do that very quickly. We first need to add two add shaders and one mix shader. Mix shader goes into the output. The red and green glass shaders go into the first add shader. And the blue goes into the last slot of the second add shader, like that. And this add shader goes into the bottom slot on the mix shader. Now you can start seeing some things happening. This glass shader, the fourth one that we made, goes into the first slot of the mix shader. For the factor of the mix shader, we're actually going to use a light path. And we're going to take the is camera ray setting into that. Now it looks good at the moment, but it looks a little flat. So we need to add some dispersion to separate out these colors a bit. So we are going to do that and to do that we are going to use another value node because we need to plug it into several slots. I'm going to set the dispersion at 0 0.044 and again so I remember what it is, oops, just rename it. Now this is going to get plugged into the second Oh, no, it's not. I beg your pardon. I need to add something else first. So on the second and th uh, fourth string from the index of refraction, we need to add a math node. And the top one is going to be set to subtract. And the bottom one to add. 
and the dispersion factor or value is going to go into the second slot of each of those. And you can see now how it's separating out the colors and you're getting that kind of dispersion and refraction going on. Um, right, I think that's about it, believe it or not. Got everything in. Yep. Okay, now let's talk about rendering. I'm using the Cycles Render Engine with a graphics processing unit card. Max samples are set to a thousand as I usually do. With the denoise feature, you probably could get away with this, um, but it's going to eat up your graphics card in doing so. I have set my light paths quite low. This setting of indirect light is quite uh, useful, so make sure that's on at 10, and make sure you've got your reflective and refractive set on. Um, but let's see what result we get with that. And there we go, we've got some beautiful um, refraction going on around the edges here, and then obviously the see-through clear glass. Um, let me just come up with a couple of other examples on different shapes so you can see the, the actual um, results on alternate models. Here it is uh, applied to a cube that's got its edges beveled. And here it is applied to the Suzanne monkey head. So as you can see, this, the, the more vertexes or more faces, flat faces that you have, the more that this really sort of brick comes into its own. Looks fantastic in animations, but does take quite a bit of time to render. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for future content. In the meantime, thanks for watching.